G'day friends, welcome to today's tutorial. We're using the rule of threes, or thirds, whatever you'd like to call it. But uh, disclaimer, I'm really, really sorry, but there's some light math involved. I was told there'd be no math. Uh, <laughs> basically, it's not difficult at all, but we're choosing three colors and we're putting three blocks down of each of each color. So I've just mapped it out on the left-hand side and you'll see me create the project on the right-hand side, you're the, the journal page. Everywhere I've got number one, I'm using the bright yellow from the Brights palette, the watercolor, Buzzy. Number two, I'm using 70s eyeshadow, the, the light blue. And number three, I'm using the bright pink, Best Friend. And I'm using watercolor, so even though I've mapped it out, I, I'm going to do a bit of wet on wet, or I'm going to let the colors blend. So I'm not super strict about where I've put those those blocks and the, you know the map on the left hand side. I'm just using it as a reference point and for you to see uh, what I'm doing and why I'm doing different things in different boxes. So in number one, in Buzzy, every I put the yellow, I'm in a journal in there. And I use a Copic marker and I think I outline it with a pen. So that's the, ki the kind of journaling. I do some lettering in there too. Everywhere I've got number two, the 70s eyeshadow, everywhere that block is, I'm going to do some doodling, but that's a different type of doodling. So I know I'm that a little confusing, but uh, I'm basically going to do some zen tangling with the pink pen, and I'm going to keep that all in the, the blue blocks. Blue blocks. Everywhere I've got number three, best friend, that pink block, I'm going to journal in there, and I come back and I add the word dots to it as well, because I wanted to do some paint marker dots, and I'm also going to put washi tape in there too, the, um, you know the eyes, the eyes washi tape? That, so they're really fun, so I put them in the, the pink boxes, and that's how... Here, I'm going to wrap the whole project up already. Uh, that's how you create a visual harmony in your page. Uh, the rule of threes, I don't pretend to know too much about it. I know it's a very effective marketing tool. I know it's a very effective tool in design. Uh, for some reason, probably science, uh, the, the rule of thirds uh, just seems to work. It builds harmony in your page. And I wanted to make a layout that used those because... I don't know if many people know about it, or if you do know about it, maybe you're thinking it's a little more difficult than it is, and I, I just see a lot of the time, I see a lot of people get really afraid of a blank page, a big, expensive white space, and, uh, and this is a great place to start if you're looking for a really simple way to put a page together, or, and you know, once you've, once you've mastered this, which will literally be the first time you try it, it's really, really easy, um, you can use these principles and, and interpret them in your own way uh, to make your spreads more harmonious or more what you what you want and I think a lot of people always ask like how do you do this or I get stuck on the background or I, I get to this point of my page where I really really love what I've done but I'm afraid I'm going to ruin it um, just using the rule of thirds the you know threes you can uh, bring harmony to any page so I think it's a great tool to understand and know uh, another great <laughs> tool to have is a helper that doesn't help so Oliver was pretty much on this desk all project. You'll see him walk around here too. He um, He's just as helpful as Bianca, so that's great. <laughs> I put my lines in here for journaling because if I didn't do that now, I knew I'd go and add something and, uh, and completely eliminate the space for me to journal in because you know I love to add too much. So I put the washi tape in all the pink spots, uh, just random places in the pink boxes, and I only used three pieces of washi tape too. So I'm really taking this rule of threes far, but... I noticed as I was doing the voiceover <laughs> right now, um, I did put white in there and I journal in white too. So I'm just gonna say for my purposes, I didn't break my own rule and that white isn't really a color. So <laughs> um, please forgive me that I added that extra one in here. I also, I mean, I used a yellow when I was doodling on the yellow. I used a pink when I was doodling on the blue because I thought, no, oh, I'm gonna keep that color story. I'm gonna keep it, uh, I'm, I'm only gonna use yellow, pink and blue. And then I used a brown pen to use the line to do the lines in the pink boxes. So uh, maybe I got a little off topic, and maybe I um, cheated <laughs> in my own tutorial. But you know, I um, I'm always cutting corners, and I'm always trying to reinterpret um, the rules. That's what I'm saying now. I'm not cheating. I'm just reinterpreting the rules. <laughs> um, so yeah, forgive me. Uh, but I think it turns out in the end. I think it still looks harmonious and. Uh, interesting fact, I never draw animals. I mean, I won't say never, but pretty much as often as I'll draw men, I'll draw animals. So that's not very often. And in fact, I probably draw more men than I draw animals. So it was really odd of me to have drawn that bird, but I think I was just... I don't know what it... I don't know. It was probably my subconscious. I've got a super active subconscious, so uh, I can think of something or see something in the day and I'll dream about it at night or 
maybe three nights later. It's really funny because I'll, I'll always give a bit of a dream recap to Steve and I, I actually think he doesn't enjoy it, but that's fine because I'm going to keep doing it anyway. Uh, <laughs> it's like a fun story time that is not real. So I, um, yeah, and I'll tell him all of the stuff that happened and he'll be like, James, we saw that two days ago or that was what I showed you four days ago. Um, and he'll just pick apart how everything that I saw within the week interpreted into my dreams. <laughs> and uh, I think he said it was something about my imagination being overactive, which is probably true because I'm creating on a daily basis. So I think that part of my brain is just switched on. You know, it's like one of those things, the more you use it, like the more it's activated, it's like a, um, what is it like that, that self-propelling, what do you call those things? Those momentum machines that like just get faster. Is that a thing? Perpetual motion? My goodness, I'm getting so sciencey in this video. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the rule of threes, let me just talk a bit more about that. I don't know too much. I know that it's effective. I know that it works. Um, great things come in threes. There's a whole bunch of examples on, on the uh, worldwide interweb of what, you know, what works in threes. It's a great marketing tool. Um, it's a great tool for photography. I know Steve uses like the rule of thirds. Apparently you can divide, you can put three, three vertical lines and three horizontal lines on your photo and anywhere they intersect is like a visual uh, point where like if you want to draw attention to that, they should kind of fall on the, on the cross sections, I think. I don't know. Ali, you might be able to clarify that for me too, because you're a photographer and Steve's at work. So I, I, you know, I could ask him, but you know what? Uh, I'm not pretending to know. I'm just going to say that it works. It's fact. It's science. So ask a scientist if you need to know. But the rule of threes is just great because it creates harmony. If you've got three colors, you know, you've instantly got a color palette and it's harmonious. And if you put three blocks of them down, then you get this page. So I encourage you to try it because it was super duper simple and you can apply these, uh, these principles to pretty much anything that you're creating. And I think it's a really good tool to have in the back of your mind. If you're ever feeling stuck, if you're ever feeling like, oh, something's just not working on this page. Maybe you've just got one random splotch of color, just add two more. And then you've got a rule of three and, uh, maybe it'll be harmonious. I don't know. It depends on what page I guess, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think, I, I think it's a very simple way to create a page. And uh, that's what I've just been looking for, a, a nice, fun, easy tutorial to uh, encourage you to, I guess, um, play with a design technique. Is it a design technique? The rule of threes, whatever it is, I just wanted you to play with it because <laughs> it's, a, it's a really good thing to think about and have in the back of your mind. Anyway, the color palette, let me just tell you what it is because I'm about to write it. Uh, I was inspired by a rainbow paddle pop. And if you don't know what that is, I know the Aussie people will know what that is because it's a summer staple for pretty much everyone as a kid. Um, but yeah, rainbow paddle pops were my favorite, favorite thing uh, when I was younger. Well, favorite ice cream, a lot of favorite things, Barbie dolls, dancing, point shoes, roller skates, and I loved it all. Um, <laughs> and I shouldn't even say favorite ice cream. You know, a golden gay time was my favorite ice cream, but really fun story. I used to get really, really nervous to ask for one because I thought they would think I was gay if I was asking for one. Plot twist, I turned out to be gay anyway, so I don't think it was the, <laughs> I don't think it was the ice cream's fault. But um, yeah, I used to be really nervous to ask for those. I'd always point at it and be like, mom, can I have that one? The uh, golden time one? I just couldn't say it. Uh, anyway, so dumb side story. But Rainbow Paddle Pops were my absolute all-time fave as well. And one of my favorite things about summer is my auntie would walk us down to the public pool, my brother and I, and we'd swim all day. And uh, she'd always buy us uh, an ice cream, a Rainbow Paddle Pop. And uh, I loved it. That's just a great summer memory I have. To me, they always tasted like rainbow. That's what I assumed rainbows tasted like. Um, and later in life, I found out they're actually just caramel flavored, which kind of destroyed my entire childhood. I'm not going to lie, but, uh, <laughs> I don't know why I was affected by it. I was actually really, really annoyed to learn that they were caramel flavored because to me, that is just the taste of the rainbow. So yeah, isn't Skittles taste of, taste of the rainbow? I don't know, I wasn't so much into Skittles. Just loved Rainbow Paddle Pop. So that's where this color story came from. If you're curious to know, go Google Rainbow Paddle Pop and you'll see these colors pop up. Well, I hope it's these colors. That's what these colors are to me. <laughs> I'm also touch, a touch colorblind. So uh, I don't know, but only with yellows and greens. So I don't know. A lot of men are apparently kind of colorblind or like percentage of men over women being colorblind is greater. So I don't know. Is that a thing? <laughs> I 
I try to be so informative in these things, and I, I swear I'm just making up facts as I go along. I'm not. I've heard that, but everything I hear, hear is from Steve, so I don't know. He could just be telling me lies, and, um, and I could just be believing them, because I'm pretty gullible. But, yes, the page. Super harmonious. I love it. I love this technique. I love how it looks, I love the style of it, and you can do it honestly, you can do it a million different ways. If you want to create like a really structural geometric look, you can put washi tape down and divide the page up and then paint in your blocks that way. You could do it with acrylic paint if you want, get a really nice matte finish, kind of like a Mondrian squares effect going on. Uh, and then when you peel out the washi tape, you'll have, you know, white lines dividing all your blocks that you could journal in or you could just leave blank, maybe doodle in them, I don't know. You could do it that way too. I only used watercolor because I loved how it all blended together. Um, a tip I would say is probably use contrasting colors. On the left hand side I used the same principles but those colors weren't super contrasty and I couldn't really make out where the orange stopped and where the brown began. I knew where the yellow was because I could kind of see that. Um, but I still ran with the same idea. I still used you know, the doodling in the yellow boxes, I still, I stamped where everywhere I saw brown, I put three different uh, stamping there, or I used a stencil at the top, I think. Um, but yeah, so I still use the same ideas, but I got a little more loose with it, the journaling I did right down the middle. So I'm just saying, you know, start off here, you'll master it the first time you do it because it's super simple, but, um, and then reinterpret it the way you would like it. Um, just use the ideas and kind of, uh, make it suit you, make it suit your aesthetic. My, honestly, my favorite one is coming up in the, in the previews. The previews? What are they called? The, um, well, I don't know what they're called now. I've lost all English. They're, um, <laughs> examples. I filmed more examples. So yeah, my favorite one you'll see in there is actually, um, triangles. I, I divided the page up into nine different triangles and I used kind of a monochromatic scheme and pulled put it together with red and I really love that page so you can just reinterpret this they don't have to be squares or rectangles they could be circles or they could be diamonds they could be uh, what am I saying triangles triangles is my favorite um, I personally love how the watercolor runs together and you can't really tell the difference in the boxes I think that to me looks a lot more harmonious than if um, if I was going to do it really geometric, but that's just my personal aesthetic. So I'd love to see you guys try it and, uh, and do it a bunch of different ways. And yeah, it's just a surefire way to make it work, I reckon. I think this is a pretty bulletproof. Uh, it's going to work. If you just follow this, the rule of threes, you're going to have something that uh, looks harmonious. And do different things in each box. Stamp in one box, maybe collage in one box. I mean, not, not box, but like the color. So everywhere you can see yellow, maybe just stamp in there. Everywhere you can see blue, maybe just, um, I don't know, use washi tape in there. Everywhere you see green, maybe, maybe, um, <laughs> can you tell I'm really excited to go to Japan? Um, I, maybe if you see green everywhere, you could put in some collage papers. Yeah. You, I mean, as with anything, all the projects that you see everywhere in life, uh, your imagination is the limit. So I encourage you to try it because I had a lot of fun doing it. I think, I think just keeping that in mind and just practicing things in threes, I think you're going to find a difference. You're going to notice a change in the way you approach your journal spreads, in the way you approach your creating. And I think you'll find in general that you're not stuck trying to figure out how to pull it together. I think that's what this is really about. That's uh, you know, other than, you know, a simple way to put together a journal page. Not everyone's going to like this, but I think what you can take from it is the, the, that, um, you know, in general, threes will pull anything together. It'll make it harmonious. Even if you're doing a whole page and it's just all, you know, illustration, use a color palette with only three colors in it, and you'll see a harmony in that too. Um, so here, the stamps, I always like to use the stamps as a jumping off point. I know I mentioned that in a project I did, you know, back at the start of the year, uh, the JDMM stamps. I use, I love to just add to them. I know a lot of people have been like, what do I do when I get to the hair phase? Cause they don't really have hair. Uh, just pull lines out from the face. They don't even have to meet up. Just make them go wild and you'll have some uh, hair blowing in the wind. And uh, just keep it loose, you know, don't, don't stress. It's just art. Google image it, go and get a reference. Heaven knows I always go to Google image and like how to draw bun or how to draw ponytail. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's good to use a reference point if you're kind of stuck on something. But it's all about the rule of threes, the rule of thirds. I encourage you to try it. Then I encourage you to manipulate the project. I encourage you to cheat, reinterpret the rules of it and, uh, and see what you come up with. Let me know if it worked for you and how you made it your own. 
So I'm going to show you the examples. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, yeah, that's all I can really say. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I hope you learned something. And please don't go and take everything I've said as fact, because I'm pretty sure half the things I said I just made up. But um, yeah, please go and try a rainbow paddle pop if you ever get an opportunity. Um, please. Your, your life will be changed forever. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. Devo